Welcome back. Today I'm going to read from part 4, Acceptance. Close Encounters when settled in the South Downs, Sussex, circa 2000 to 2010, with flying visits to the Emerald Isle and East Africa. This part comprises six chapters from 15 to 21. And today I'm going to read chapter 17, Stokes, Mutual Curiosity. I don't recall ever seeing a stoat in Northern Ireland up until the time I left in my mid-twenties. In Ireland, the common name for the stoat is a weasel, and there are no weasels. In the Scots dialect, which parts of Ulster share, it is known as Whitrut from White Rat. The Irish stoat does not, however, turn white or partially white in winter, a transformation known as ermine. On the stoat's body, the dividing line between the dark upper fur and the white lower fur is straight in England and irregular in Ireland. Meanwhile, the difference between a stoat and a weasel in England are that stoats are longer at 30 to 40 centimetres compared with weasels at 20 to 27 centimetres. Stoats also have a longer tail, about half its body weight, with a bushy black tip. In addition, the stoat has a bounding gait with an arched back whereas the movement of the weasel is quicker and flatter to the ground. Living in the South Downs National Park, walking and driving around in my trusted Citroen 2CV, I was aware of the presence of mustelids on numerous occasions. My daughter and I glimpsed them en route back from Bretton Bottom Vineyard and in frosty mornings in the Ouse Valley. A little head would pop up out a few times as you walked along. After a particularly good barbecue, when folks had gone, and before the final clear-up, it was not unusual for a hedgehog or rodent to appear, which such were the appetising smells wafting around the flint-walled garden. This evening, something was sneaking up through the wild strawberry corridor at the base of the wall at speed. Could it really be a stoke or weasel in the twilight darkness? With all these partial sightings, it is very hard to positively identify the species. My farmer neighbour said, anecdotally, that in these parts it would only be a stoke, and there's usually some truth in local knowledge. I have a regular patch that I walk, and I enjoy observing the seasons, especially through one particular goody watery copse intersection between fields that I was later to name Stoat Alley. Most days there's no sign of them, but when they do arrive it's almost likely that they will stay a few days in a row and it's worth making an extra trip. First, adult stoats could be seen carrying something in their mouths, baby stoats, kits, or baby rabbits, kittens. It is hard to say as they both look lifeless. Blood-curdling screams could be heard when a hunt is on. Sometimes a rabbit has been hunted by stop and a half out near you, as if trying to use you as a decoy, while the stone is in pursuit, though you're quite far behind. An abandoned dead rat rabbit is also worth watching from a distance, as the stoat, if it has been disturbed, will often come back from it. My best encounter happened in a random evening, which I know I recall as follows. Just had an incredible close encounter with a stoat down a country lane from my place, where I have seen many stoats before, but not for a couple of years. I was alerted when two partridge were flushed out, but more relevantly, a robin, wren, and whitethroat were all scolding something below. Minutes later, an adult stoat was frolicking around in some scrubby ground among the ragwort about five metres from me. Rolling, tumbling and even jumping up and kicking his legs in the air, I didn't need my binoculars but got a close-up of this feisty little predator. He didn't appear to see me as I froze to the spot like one of his rabbit prey hypnotised by his antics. Then he darted across the track and came bounding up the edge of the ferns, almost passing, and stopped half a metre from me, suddenly intrigued. When he looked like coming towards me, I shuffled my feet in my barefoot sandals 
As I felt he might take a liking to my toes, he bolted into the cover, but came out again at least twice to check me out. Such was his curiosity. The secret of my close encounters like this is stillness and silence. Easy when you're on your own. Sadly, if I was talking to another, I don't think we would have seen the stoat at all. They just can't understand a silent human without motion. And I've got as close to a brown hare, roe deer, grey squirrel and red fox using the same antic. Except with the hare it smelled me first. Yes I know, rather than me deliberately spooking it. This story was first posted on Facebook 27th of June 2015 at 1652. Remember, the more you're out, the more you see. That's all from me. Goodbye.